Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today, once again, an interesting topic about industrial problems and how to solve them. A short video where we will discuss real life industrial problems where theoretical knowledge meets a practical application once again. And one prominent practice in the industry that I came to know uh, once I joined uh, this company and I worked with them on field, uh, I came to know about this concept that is regularly used in the industry. Knowing your unknowingly, this has worked multiple times for the guys who have used it, uh, siphoning or popularly water siphoning. Uh, now, what is this concept of siphoning and how does it regularly helps in industry? It is a popular practice of industry. So siphoning is one of the most popular practices uh, in the industry. So one of the, uh, I am going to discuss two of the prominent users of water siphoning that I have personally observed in the industry and recently we have worked on it. And I will try to crack the concept of siphoning and how is it useful in cracking real life industrial problems. So one of the real life problems that has been uh, recently introduced or recently that I've faced is there is an emergency water tank in our plant wherein there is a constant inlet and constant outlet. Now due to some reason, uh, due to this outlet getting choked or blocked or by reverse flow, what is happening is uh, there is this one gap or one hole wherein an LIT is fixed, that is level indicator transmitter is fixed, wherein it dips in the solution, there is dips in the water trying to measure the level of the emergency tank. So what happens is through this uh, gap from wherein the level indicator transmitter is dipped into the uh, emergency tank to measure its level, uh, due to this reverse flow or back pressure, the emergency is constantly overflowing. Now we cannot drain the emergency in the running plant, neither can we like operate or change these valves uh, regularly in the running plant. So it's a shutdown activity. So you need to maintain the level or if not maintain the level, uh, at least try to uh, do an arrangement for the water that is overflowing from the tank, uh, bring some arrangement wherein this water will not spill out and not damage this LIT, neither will it fall outside and damage the rest of the equipment that li that's lying outside because this emergency tank is uh, fitted at a uh, very high level, about 20 to 25 meters uh, above ground and it damages the other equipment, the water is a hot water, hot acidic water uh, that damages the other ducts and other equipments, other pumps that's lying uh, at the ground level or just above the ground level because the water is spilling out, it's overflowing out from the tank and falling on the other equipments. So we needed to solve this problem in the running plan without operating or without really restructuring the positioning of the valves. So uh, how do we work it out? There's a breathing space, let me tell you, there's a breathing space to let out or vent out any type of pressure due to the water vapor that is formed inside this tank. And we have to manage with this breathing um, uh, space, somehow we have to get this water out. So we applied the concept of water siphoning in the real life industrial problem. Firstly, second uh, example is this, uh, there is a dike wall, there is a wall and there is some water filled in it. You will regularly find this practice in the industry, wherein this water is pumped out to an external pond or a drain so that this can be drained. Sometimes there is no drain valve in this dike wall and what you need to do is you need to pump out this water because the dike, gets, uh, dike wall gets filled up with water. So this is a regular industrial practice. Now this pump takes some extra amount of energy. The pump needs to be shifted. Generally we use a submersible pump where, which dips into the solution, dips into the water and pumps the water out of it. Now this submersible pump is uh, heavy. It needs to be shifted from one place to the other because this is a temporary application of the submersible pump. You will not regularly dip in the submersible pump. So once the purpose is done, you need to reshift it again. It will be a time consuming job. It's a power consuming practice. So here and also without, without the use of power, you can actually transfer water from uh, a lower level uh, maybe to a higher level and thereafter pumping it out to an even lower level. So siphoning is a practice wherein from a lower level, from a lower level, you are first transferring the liquid to a higher level and then to a further lower level. This is the practice of siphoning. Now, what? how do you do it? How do you transfer this water to a higher level and then to a to a lower level, it will fall by gravity by virtue of its uh, of, of the force exerted by gravity. But how do you transfer it to a higher level? Now the concept of water siphoning comes out there. What do you actually do? How did we solve this problem? What we did was through this vent, we fitted one 
tubic, tubic tubular arrangement one uh, pipeline we fitted and we connected it to the drain that's uh, on the ground level and through this pipeline we pumped out the water not using a pump by using but by using the concept of water siphoning now what is the concept of water siphoning if i discuss in details let me take one this one example there is this water in a tank and you fit a tube now in this normal arrangement of tube if you fit in this tube or pipe in the pump normally since this tube is filled up with air completely with air let me tell you so it's exerting a p atmospheric pressure here and p atmospheric pressure is being uh, exerted on the water surface as well so in this particular ideal condition where is p atmospheric is fitted in here and p atmospheric is applied here a little amount of water may be transferred depending on the amount of or the, or, the, or the section of pipe that is dipped in the water by virtue of this rho g h pressure rho g h some amount of water may get transferred but it will never be enough to rise it to this level and then fall by gravity so what do we have to do next the primary things that uh, thing that comes to our mind if you know the answer pause this video and try to answer the question so the primary thing is that when we drink anything using a straw what do we do we suck in suck in the uh, air in the straw so we remove the atmosphere and create a vacuum in this region so what happens is due to the atmospheric pressure or the pressure inside the uh, chamber by virtue of that and its own rho g h p atmospheric plus rho g h on one side and nothing on the other side because we have created a vacuum by sucking in the air that was present in the tube the water will by virtue of this pressure head try to rise against gravity and try to come out so what happens is it rises against gravity and it rises to a height h2 max considering no frictional loss what will be the formula of this rho g h2 supposedly it rises to h2 level so what happens is rho g h2 is nothing but p atmospheric plus rho g h1 so in a liquid level if you remove this atmospheric uh, air in a uh, tube or in a pipe automatically by virtue of the atmospheric pressure that is exerted on the top of the liquid level and by virtue of its own weight own pressure created by the amount of section that is dipped into the solution or water by virtue of these two pressures it rises against gravity to a level h2 so these are the this is the concept of water siphoning so what is so how do you remove the moisture here we cannot apply a suction force by blowing out the air by taking out the air we cannot apply that suction force so what is done what is water siphoning we cover the industrial practice that we do is we cover the mouth of the the other end of the pipe and fill this entire pipe with water so we fill this entire pipe with water by covering the mouth so the entire air is replaced by water now this entire section is filled up with water now what we do we leave we remove the cover and the water tends to fall down now as it tends to fall down by gravity from this air pressure so it creates a vacuum here as the water falls down it will create a vacuum here and there is no air to exert pressure so this liquid rises by virtue of its own weight and atmospheric pressure against gravity and then when it comes here it falls down this is one theory another theory is by cohesive force cohesive force between the water molecules so whenever the water molecules come down by gravity they pull the other molecules towards itself kind of a capillary action when it rises against gravity by water siphoning by siphoning so it's kind of a capillary action also popularly known as the capillary action so what happens is due to this atmospheric pressure and due to this rho g h the water tends to move out move out and tra travel against gravity and the cohesive force of the water molecules pulls out the water and the entire film falls down under gravity so the, it it pulls the next level of water so these are the two theories first of all the water filled in entirely the pipe filled in entirely with water and then draining the pipe will create a vacuum hence this atmospheric pressure and rho g h will push out the water from the pipe to uh, below so if we are not getting enough force or enough power to like uh, rise it against gravity to this height to this height what we do is we dip 
the pipe section a little bit more so that this rho g h increases. So the P A T M plus rho g h entire force is enough to rise it to h2 level. So the height 2 is achieved in this sense. And once the height 2 is achieved, it will normally fall under gravity by virtue of the gravitational force. This is the concept of water siphoning. So without the use of pump, we can actually rise, make a fluid rise against gravity and fall with gravity. This is the concept of water siphoning. And this is exactly how we dealt with the emergency tank situation. We uh, fitted the pipe and we connected it to the drain. We rise, the, uh, we, we made the liquid rise against gravity by water siphoning, by filling up the tube fully with water, then dipping it in the emergency tank vent and then leaving the bottom of the uh, pipeline such that the water in the pipeline drains and once it drains it creates a vacuum and by virtue of the atmospheric pressure and the OGH that is its own pressure it comes out of the pipe rises to the side and falls again by gravity creating vacuum for the next level of water to enter. Similarly is the case of the dike wall how we separated or how we pumped out the water without using a pump. So siphoning is a concept of self pumping without using power or without using any type of electrical force to pump out the water but it cannot be done with a very high uh, like if this level is increasingly high that is if this much water is there and the wall height is this much then the pumping through siphoning becomes a lot more difficult but if it's filled up to this level the pumping becomes a little easier because it's only this much height it has to travel against gravity by virtue of the atmospheric pressure and rho g h so this is the concept of siphoning this is the concept of water setting that is readily used in the industry. So thank you very much. If you like this video, like it, share it with your friends. We will keep on bringing more videos like this. Subscribe to our channel. Thank you.